Hello everyone, and welcome or welcome back. In this tutorial we will talk about sprites, sounds, and sound effects in Scratch. Also we will show you how to play with them, and make them fit for your project. So without wasting our precious time, let's get started. Setting up your sprites. Everything needs a place to live. The place where sprites live and can move around, in two dimensions is called, the stage. The current location of a sprite, can be defined by two numbers, X and Y. Representing the coordinates, within the two-dimensional space of the stage, it is important to note, that X represents the horizontal distance, from the center of the stage area, while the Y represents the vertical distance, from the center of the stage area. For example, if we change the value of X it will move the sprite in horizontal direction, and if we change the value of Y, it will move the sprite in vertical direction. You can also give negative values to X and Y. Assigning negative value to X will move the sprite towards the left side of the stage, and assigning negative value to Y will move the sprite towards the bottom of the stage. Remember that the middle point of the stage is when both X and Y are equal to zero. There is a block named point in direction, if you click on the number inside the block, it shows a new way of setting your sprite's direction. And I will leave this to you. Check it out and see how it works. Playing with location. Now that you know that you can use the X and Y variable to move your sprite. For moving a sprite from one location to another, you can use two options, which are change X by underscore block or set X to underscore block. The set option will teleport the sprite to a brand new spot, while the change option will move the sprite to the distance you put in. Whichever block you choose, the location of the sprite will be changed to a new one. Gliding Gliding makes the movement of sprites more interesting and lively. The sprites don't have to just disappear and move from one spot to the next and then reappear. In other words, gliding allows you to animate the movement of sprites. You can watch them changing position in small steps. Use the glide seconds to x underscore y underscore block to make your sprite move from one spot to another in a certain amount of time. This works the same as go to x underscore y underscore, but it will show you the sprite moving to the new location and you can control the time it takes to reach the destination. For a smooth timed animation, you should use a glide feature because the animation for move underscore steps might not be as smooth as you would like it to be. Move the sprite. If you want to move your sprite in the direction it's facing, use the move underscore steps block. My sprite is facing to the right and let's see how it behaves with 5 steps at once, 25 steps at once, and 100 steps at once. Now we will change the direction from right to upward, and see how it responds. Set Sprite Direction If you know exactly which direction you want your sprite to go, use the point in direction underscore block. The range of this block is from minus 180 to 180, as you can see on the screen. Sometimes you may want to play with the direction of your sprite in a small value. The turn 15 degrees with an arrow pointing towards the right and left side blocks change the direction of sprite in clockwise or counterclockwise direction, respectively. And you can also change the value inside the block. For immediately changing the direction of your sprite towards something else on the stage, you can use the point toward underscore block. For me, there is only one way to do this. And that is the mouse pointer. Mouse pointer block will always point your sprite towards the location of the mouse while your project is running. So if you want your sprite to chase your mouse on the screen, it is the most convenient option you could use in Scratch. Set rotation style. If you want to move your sprite in directions other than it is facing, you can do this by changing the rotation style. For instance, you might want it to be looking to the left or right while following your mouse pointer but not up. You can do this by using your old code and adding and changing the rotation style. Motion variables. These three oval shaped blocks are found at the bottom of the set of motion blocks. These are the sprite's motion variables. 
The values for each of these variables are shown on the stage if you click on the checkbox next to it. Sound Workspace Life is incomplete and boring without sounds and music, and so is a game. Sounds bring joy and keep your audience engaged for longer duration without getting bored. Scratch provides a nice and easy way to add sounds to your game. By clicking on the Sounds tab in the top left corner of the screen, you can find the Sound Workspace. This is the place where you can see the sounds of the currently selected sprite or the stage. And here you can also add, delete, or change any of them. The pink box here indicates the structure of sound. Many sprites in Scratch already come with their own sounds. For example, a ball comes with a boing and a pop sound. You can add any sound you want by clicking on the Sounds tab located at the top left of the screen. This comes in handy when you are using a sprite that doesn't have its own sound. By clicking on the little button in the bottom left that looks like a speaker, you can choose many other sounds from Scratch's library. Or record your own voice and use it. Or choose a random sound. Or you can upload any sound file from your computer. Editing sounds. In Scratch, you don't have to just add or record sounds, you can also change them. This pink box shows the volume of the sound. The left side is the start of the sound, while the right side is the end of the sound. This helps you play with the sound and edit it. If you want to select a part of your sound and edit it, you have to click and hold at your desired place and move towards the place that you want to select. The delete button above the pink box lets you take out the selected part. Renaming your sound to something meaningful is also a good option. You can also make your sound faster, slower, louder, softer, fade in and out, or even play it backward, but these all options are permanent editing to your sound. In case if you made any mistake, you also have the advantage of using the two buttons, undo button curved arrow pointing to the left and redo button curved arrow pointing to the right. The sound blocks. Now that you've learned about adding and editing sounds to make them your own, it's time to learn about the different sound blocks these blocks are full of fun things for your project. They can play funny noises, make them louder or softer, and even make them sound really squeaky, like a mouse. Playing sounds. These two blocks start sound underscore or play sound underscore until done are pretty similar and the easiest way to get started with sounds. They both start to play a sound. They are a little different though. If you want to finish the entire sound before playing the next block, Use the play sound underscore until done block. If you want to play a sound and then move to the next block right away, you can use the start sound underscore block. Sometimes you don't want music or any other sound to keep playing like music playing in the background. You can use the stop all sounds block. This block will stop every sound that's playing and moves on to the next block of your project. Keep it down. The scratch has a sound variable called volume. Just like the X and Y variable for each sprite. You click on that checkbox that says volume underneath the sound blocks, you will see the volume for that sprite or stage that you selected. You can use the change volume by underscore and set volume to underscore percent blocks to change the volume. These changes are not permanent to the original sound which means that, when you use these blocks, they change the volume for a certain time. Changing Sound Effects The pitch of a sound tells you about how high or low the sound is. If you want to make your sound more like a squeaky mouse, you can increase the pitch effect of a sound. As the pitch of a sound goes up, the sound plays faster. To make a sound heavy and slow, you should decrease the pitch effect. It will make it play for a longer time, but at the same time, it will also slow down the sound. You can play with the pitch of the sound or other effects with the change underscore effect by underscore and set underscore effect to underscore. As I said earlier, these blocks don't change anything permanently. It only works for a certain number of blocks. And I want you to try these effects while using headphones and see what they really do to the sound. Some other effects are faster and slower. These two make sounds higher or lower in pitch, without changing the volume though. Robot. This effect makes the sound like it is produced by some mechanical parts or robot. Louder and softer. 
These are used to change the volume of the selected sound. You can see the changes in the editor at the same time. Reverse. This effect plays the sound in reverse. Fade in. This makes the sound start out soft and slowly get back to the normal volume. Fade out. This makes the sound start out at normal volume and slowly get softer. If you change a sound with effects blocks, it's good practice to reset your sound back to the original volume and effect as it was at the beginning of your project. For that, you have to add the clear sound effects or set volume to 100% block or maybe both of them. Well, that's all we have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.